Good day, everyone. My name is Damian Aworko, and thank you for listening in. Today I will talk about machine learning on graphs, and how it can be applied to electricity grids. So why look at electricity grids? Electricity is of critical importance to our modern lifestyle. We often do not realize how much we depend on it for freshwater production, for energy production, and many other wonders that we take for granted. Unsurprisingly, the grid is a complex system, one that requires a constant balance between electricity supply and demand. The grid is a network, and at each node, power is either generated or demanded. There are two key problems in, in grid management. Power flow is finding that network state, given the power generated and demanded at each node. This is relatively simple to do. Optimal power flow is much harder. Given the demand at each node, we want to answer the question, how much power should each generator produce? It's very difficult due to the sinusoidal nature of electrical power. And unfortunately, approximations fall short in one way or another. So, how could we use graph neural networks to learn the optimal power allocation and network. If successful, we could leverage local computations, distributed implementations, and scalability. If you're still listening, that's fantastic. In this presentation, I will define optimal power flow and its associated challenges, explain how electrical grids can be represented by graphs, I will let Fernando Gama introduce graph neural networks, and finally, I will describe how we applied them to optimal power flow. First, let's define optimal power flow. Each node in the grid can generate and consume electricity. We can express the state of each node using four variables. The voltage, voltage angle, the net active power, and the net reactive power. Thus, the state vector at each node is a four vector. The state of the whole grid is described by the n by 4 state matrix. The state of each node is a row in the state matrix. The physical characteristics of the grid are described by the power flow equations. To solve them is to solve the power flow problem I mentioned earlier. They relate the local power generation with the global state, and they depend on the topology of the grid a set of all electrical components in the grid. In optimal power flow, we want to minimize the total cost to generate power at each node. Our solution must be consistent with the physics of the grid. In other words, it must satisfy the power flow equations. These are nonlinear and are the main reason behind the difficulty of the problem. Additionally, there are bounds in the values each state element can take. For example, a specific node might only be able to produce below 400 megawatts of power. Broadly, there are two main approaches to solving optimal power flow. DCOPF uses small angle approximations to linearize the problem. While commonly used in industry, this assumption breaks down when the grid is even moderately loaded. On the other hand, ACOPF provides the exact solution Using, usually using interior point methods. It is very slow for large networks, which makes it impractical for real-time optimization. Next, I will explain how an electrical grid can be represented by a graph, specifically a weighted directed graph. Nodes on our graph will correspond to nodes on the grid. Edges will represent the electrical connections between nodes. The state matrix becomes a graph signal with four features. We construct our adjacency matrix from the Gaussian kernel of impedance. The lower the impedance between the nodes, the closer they are. Additionally, to ensure our matrix is sparse, we apply a threshold below which the weights will be zero. I will let Fernando Gama explain graph neural networks. As Damien has been saying, the electrical grid can be described in terms of a graph, and the state of the grid can be described in terms of a graph signal. 
This allows us to deploy graph neural networks as a means of learning scalable and computationally inexpensive solutions to the problem of optimal power flow. Graph neural networks are built from graph convolutions followed by pointwise nonlinearities. And since graph convolutions are generalizations of time convolutions, let me take the license to remind you about regular convolutions. A convolution is a linear combination of shifted versions of the signal x. We shift the signal through time, and for each shift, we weigh by a different coefficient h. If we want to extend this concept to graphs, we need to have a notion of shift. This notion of shift is defined in a graph signal processing to be a matrix description s of the graph. We see that we can describe this time signal as supported by a graph that is a directed path. Then, if we apply the adjacency matrix S of this graph to a signal X, we are indeed shifting the signal in time, or equivalently, shifting it around the graph. So, the traditional notion of shift in time is equivalent to applying the shift S of a graph. Since now we have the definition in terms of a graph, we can extend this to arbitrary graphs. Here we see how, by applying the shift operator, we are gathering information from further away neighborhoods. So, a graph convolution is a linear combination of shifted versions of the signal. The effect of the shift operator is to update the signal with a linear combination of neighboring values. Thus, this operation is entirely local. Certainly, a graph convolution is equivalent to the application of a graph filter, and I will use both of these terms interchangeably. Equipped with the operation of graph convolution, we can define graph neural networks. GNNs are a cascade of layers, each of which applies a graph convolution followed by a pointwise nonlinearity. So the signal goes in, gets filtered by this graph filter H1 over here with these specific filter tabs, and then it is fed into a nonlinearity. The output of this layer acts as the input to the next layer where it is applied to another graph filter with different filter tabs H2, another nonlinearity, yielding an output that then is fed into the next layer, and so on. The GNN depends on the filters H, which we learn from training data, but also depends on the graph structure S. In summary, a GNN is a nonlinear mapping that exploits the underlying graph structure S, it relies on local information only, and has a distributed implementation. Finally, I will explain how we use supervised learning to train a GNN to predict optimal power flow solutions. Our model is a nonlinear function that takes in the initial grid state X, the adjacency matrix A, and filters H. We want to train our model to imitate the OPF solution P star. We assume the existence of a dataset T a set of initial states and OPF solutions. To train our model, we want to find filters which minimize the total loss over the data set. We use mean squared error for our loss. Critically, once the model is trained, we no longer need the costly values of P star to make predictions. To construct the data set T, we use an IEEE power system test case. We create two data sets, one for the IEEE 30 and one for the IEEE 118 test case. Each test case describes the grid structure, constraints, and provides reference loads. To train and test our model under varying loads, we generate these loads by taking samples from a uniform distribution about the reference loads. For each load sample, we find a suboptimal initial state by solving the DCOPF problem. We also find the optimal ACOPF solution using EPOPs. This takes a long time to compute, but is only needed during training. To evaluate the performance of GNNs, we compare their performance against multi-layer perceptrons. We use two GNN architectures. The global GNN is a multi-layer GNN followed by a single fully connected layer. The local GNN is a, multi, is a simple multi-layer GNN. Similarly, we use two MLP architectures. The global MLP is a regular MLP. 
the local MLP is composed of n separate MLPs. Each takes in the 1 by 4 state vector of the nth node and outputs the power to be produced at that node. In our numerical experiments, we train the model, models under MSC loss on data from the IE30 and IE118 test cases. We evaluate the performance of each model using root mean squared error. GNNs outperformed MLPs in all experimental categories, but this difference is more prominent on IAE 118. We see a twofold improvement between the, between the global architectures and a tenfold improvement between the local architectures. We also observe that GNNs are much faster than traditional methods. Finding the optimal solution using APOP takes 18 seconds on the IAE 118 dataset. The GNNs take 50 microseconds to make predictions, an improvement of five orders of magnitude. Optimal power flow is a fundamental problem in energy grid, grid management. It answers the question, how to satisfy demand while minimizing operational costs. Unfortunately, Nonlinear constraints make it a difficult problem to solve. GNNs are well suited to applications on the electrical grid. They are scalable, since the number of filter taps is independent of network size. They also exploit the network structure of the data. GNNs are capable of accurately predicting the solution to optimal power flow. Moreover, they do so dramatically faster than it takes to run traditional methods. Thank you for your time.